I have imported the interactive 360 video sample project directly into my Unity project. I have my main menu editor scene open. This scene is meant to be a test bed that we can use directly in the editor without a VR headset to understand how the project works. All right, in my scene, I have a directional light, I have a camera, and my camera has this camera editor control script on it. That just allows me to mock head movement using my mouse. I'm gonna turn that off for now. I have a main menu manager game object with a menu manager script on it. I have a fade out UI object that handles the fading in between scenes. I have an event system which handles the input and I have a video manager game object with a game manager script on it. This handles uh, the loading of the scenes from the main menu. Let's hit play. All right, so now I can just hover over any of these buttons to load a new scene which will contain a 360 video. Let's start with Mont Royale here. All right, now I'm in my 360 video. I'm just looking around the 360 video playing back in my scene. All right. Let's load Waterfront. All right, and now this will load a scene called 3D Waterfront. I can hit pause to pause the video. And then I can hit play to play the video again. All right, now that we know what the scene does, let's take a look at how it works. My main menu manager game object contains all of the UI that my user can interact with. It also has this menu manager script, and this manages the buttons in my scene and allows them to load the next scene. It also toggles between the play and pause button when you hit it. There's this Oculus menu, menu toggle parameter in the menu manager script, and we're not going to be using that here because we're just directly testing in the editor. All right, so I have three elements for my buttons and scene parameter. Those three elements are option one, House, option two, Mont Royale, and option three, Waterfront. These three elements here are going to directly correspond to these three elements on my video manager game object. These are the scenes to load. So option one will load this scene, 3D home interior. Option two will load this scene, 2D lookout and option three will load the 3D waterfront scene. These scene names can just be typed in directly in the inspector like this. 3D waterfront. And I can see that it matches up to one of my scenes in my video scene. Now let's take a look at one of these video scenes that are being loaded from my main menu scene. I'm going to go into my project folder, go into scenes, video scenes, and open up 2D Lookout. Oh, there we go. Now it's open. And now when I hit play, the 360 video will just play back in this scene. All right, looks good. So what's really happening here is my video player component is playing back this video onto the Unity Skybox. So this source of my video player component is video clip, and it's using this video 2D Lookout one. So if I go into my project window, you see I have a bunch of different options of videos here. I could actually just drag and drop a different video in there if I want, uh, 2D Plaza. Um, I have it playing on awake, waiting for the first frame. All right, and now this is what's really important here, the render mode of my video player. So I'm rendering this to a render texture here, and the texture 
uh, the target texture is specified as this 2D 3840 by 2160 target texture. And if you're a 360 filmmaker, you probably recognize those numbers as being a very common pixel size for a 360 video. All right, so let's take a look at this render texture here. All right, so this render texture um, has the size specified right here, 3840 by 2160. And we actually selected this size because it matches up to the pixel size of the video. And if you're not sure what your video size is, you can just look at your video in the inspector. And I'm just going to click here where it says the video name in the drop down to source info. And there I can see the pixel size. The source info also tells me uh, the size of my video, the duration, frames, FPS, and all of that. All right. So under the video folder, there's a render texture folder, and this contains, contains a bunch of different sample render textures for common 360 video sizes. Now, if you need to make your own render texture, it's really easy to do. You just click Create, Render Texture, and you can create it from here. It's just important to specify the size to match the size of your video. All right, and now that we have this render texture specified, we need to actually map the render texture to the skybox of the scene. So I'm gonna view my lighting window. Under my environment section, I have a skybox material specified. And my skybox material is 2D 3840 by 2160. Let's take a look at the skybox material in more detail. All right, so we can see that it's using this skybox panoramic shader. And this shader is new with 2017.3 and it's essential to get the playback in the skybox. So you're gonna to have to use Unity 2017.3 or higher to use the sample project. All right, and we have the mapping as latitude longitude layout. The image type is 360 degrees, but we could also do 180 degree video if we had one. And we don't have a 3D layout, this is just a 2D video. All right. So let's hit play, and the video is actually going to change now to this 2D Plaza video, because I changed it out. So let's go ahead and switch it back, 2D Lookout 1, and save my scene. All right, now I'm going to take a look at one of my 3D video scenes, a 3D waterfront. All right, I'm going to hit play, and see but it's playing back in my scene. Now we can't actually see the 3D element here, and that's because we're just playing it in the editor. Now if I was using my VR headset, I'd be able to see the 3D element. And that's because the way that we set up our skybox material is a little different than the 2D sample. So we can go to the video player component and see that we're using this 3D 3840 by 2160 target texture. And if we go into our lighting window, we can see that the skybox material is this 3D 3840 by 2160 material. I'm just going to look at that in more detail in the inspector. And note that I'm still using the skybox panoramic shader, but the only change is that I have this 3D layout parameter specified. Before, it was none. And now we're using the over under layout. And that's because my 3D waterfront video is using this over under layout. We can just see that in the inspector right there. Now I have my main menu gaze scene open. And this scene works very similarly to the main menu editor scene as far as the general workflow goes and scripting that navigates from one scene to the other and pauses and plays the video. Uh, but this scene uses gaze-based VR interactions. So before I do anything, I'm going to go up to my VR toggle and make sure that I have VR enabled here. Now when I hit play, you can see that I have uh, movement around my scene and this is just me moving my headset around. And there's a little green dot and that's where the gaze is. So as I overlook here, 
the gaze is actually what triggers um, the loading of the next scene. So once this radial fills up down there, I'll let it fill up now, we'll load the next scene. All right. And I can pause by just hovering over the pause play button for a couple seconds to pause and play the video. So a couple things are different in this scene from the editor scene. One of those being the main menu UI. So let's look at the main menu manager and the main menu gaze prefab underneath it. So one of the first things to note is that we're actually rendering this in world space, whereas when we were overlaying it just in the editor, we were using the screen space overlay render method. So for VR, you always want to render your UI in world space. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a really unpleasant experience for your user. All right, and we also have a couple additions to the main menu itself. Um, we have these selector inputs here, these bars here, and those could be found under the main menu gaze object under video selector, and it's just called the selection slider here. All right, so it's important that um, my selection slider is matched up to the interactable object that I'm actually making gaze with. So when I'm looking around, I'm not actually gazing over the slider, I'm gazing over the button, but as I'm gazing over the button, the slider will fill up. Another difference is on the main camera. There are a couple additional components on the camera, the first being the VRI Raycaster script, and this is what shoots out a raycast and detects if it has come into contact with any interactable game objects in the scene. And below that we have the VR camera UI and that's what's rendering the small green dot that the user sees where they are looking. All right, now let's take a look at the hotspot example gaze scene. So this is also going to be gaze based and can be used for any VR headset that you can build to from Unity, except instead of having a main menu style interaction, we're interacting with our scene using hotspots. And I'm going to hit play. And I'm starting up with my plaza video playing, and I can see a hotspot represented by that uh, image of feet over there. And if my gaze makes contact with it, then it will trigger the new scene to load, which was actually filmed in the same location. So, all right, so let's take a look at the hotspot game object here. Um, the hotspot manager script contains all of the hotspots in the scene. In this case, we only have one, so it's really simple. All right, and under my hotspots game object, I have my individual hotspot, hotspot one. And you can see the way that it's placed in the scene. It's uh, pretty close to the camera. So it's up to you to place it. Um, where it'll overlay well with your backdrop. All right, and I have that image there, the GUI navigation marker. And I have the hotspot button gaze script on my hotspot. So this script is what actually triggers the selection image to start filling when the user's gaze has made contact with the hotspot. Uh, and the selection image is this highlighted image, uh, and that's underneath my main camera game object. I have the GUI reticle, and this is the normal reticle, it's just the dot, and then highlighted, meaning that my reticle has come into contact with the hotspot, 
Now I have my main menu controller scene open, and this scene demonstrates how to add interactivity using Oculus Touch controllers. I'm going to hit play. And I'm back into this main menu format. You can see I have my Oculus Touch controllers, and on my right hand, I have a Raycast shooting out of the controller, and this can interact with any of these buttons. When I use the index uh, trigger on the touch controller, that will trigger the next scene to load. Alright, I can also pause the video just like the other examples. And because we have controllers now, I can use a button on my controller. I already configured the B button to show and hide the menu. So when you're actually enjoying the video, you might not want to have a big menu in your face. And then you realize that you want to see a different video to bring the menu back up. So the biggest difference in this scene is that we now have a player game object that contains our camera and our right hand and our left hand. And we get tracking information from the Oculus Touch controllers using the tracked pose driver script here. So on my right hand, I have the device set to XR controller, right controller, and left controller for the left hand. Now, on my right controller, I'm shooting out the Raycast input. This is similar to the one that we were uh, having come out of our camera for the gaze inputs. And that's going to detect if the Raycast coming out of the hand has come into contact with any interactable objects. And we also have a primary input access parameter where you can specify which button of the Oculus Touch controller you want to trigger the click event. In this case, we're using secondary index trigger, which is the index trigger of the right hand. And the main menu manager works pretty much the same, except now we're making use out of this Oculus menu toggle. And the menu toggle is using button two, which is the B button on the right touch controller. The final example scene is the main menu Google VR controller scene and this shows you how you can integrate with the Google VR SDK to get input from the Daydream mobile controller and add interaction that way. The Google VR SDK can be found in the project under plugins Google VR. In my scene here, I have uh, my player game object with the main camera, and I have all of these Google VR controller prefabs, such as the Google VR controller pointer, the event system, and the headset. However, other than that, it works just the same as the Oculus Touch controller sample. Note that I have switched my built settings to Android. A nice thing about Google VR is you have the ability to do an instant preview, which is what this instant preview main prefab is for. That's it for the short tutorial. I hope that the Interactive 360 sample project is of help to you as you begin your journey developing Interactive 360 experiences in Unity.